Guys, we're about to dive into everything you need to know to start effectively playing the squad leader role in Hell Let Loose. So hit that subscribe button and get your mind right, because we're starting now. It's important to understand that as a squad leader you have responsibilities that go above and beyond just killing the enemy. You're one of several key players in making sure your team has map control, situational awareness, and a steady flow of information. So forget about your KD ratio and focus on your responsibilities as a leader. This is not about you, it's about the team, the greater good. Communication is everything in Hell Let Loose, so the first thing you want to do is break the ice with your squad. It helps set the tone that you expect at least some level of communication and that you're looking to work together as a team. A bit of playful banter can also be a great way of getting people to come out of their shell and have some fun. We have an issue. I have to take a massive shit right now, so I have to AFK for just a sec. Pinch it off, get it back, get back in time. <laughs> Using your microphone is mandatory for playing squad leader, so if you don't have one, get one and use it. We've all been in those games where there's no garrisons and we have to run all the way across the map only to die and start all the way back at HQ again. The garrison is what saves your entire team from this massive pain in the ass. So be sure to make garrisons a constant and top priority. A good rule of thumb is to always try to have a minimum of three garrisons around the currently active cap zone and three defensive garrisons around your previously captured cap zone. So the more you can build, the better. Building a garrison in friendly territory is pretty simple, as they only cost 50 supplies, which happens to be the exact amount of supplies your support player carries. Ask them to drop their supplies wherever you want to place your garrison. Then just take out your watch and scroll to the garrison option and click and hold the left mouse button or hold the aim and shoot buttons if you're on console to build a garrison. Easy peasy. Building a garrison in enemy territory, however, is a bit more challenging for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, you're naturally going to run into enemies much more frequently in enemy territory. Oh fuck, I just got sniped right when I was working on the garrison. But also, garrisons in enemy territory cost twice the supplies to build. You can have your support player place their 50 supplies, but then there's a 5 minute cooldown before that player is able to place another 50 supplies. So you either have to wait it out, or you can work around this by having them switch to another role and have one of your other squad mates redeploy as support and place their 50 supplies, giving you the 100 total supplies needed to place the garrison. Alternatively, you can ask your commander for a supply drop on your location, but be aware that the enemy enemy can see the supply drop floating down, and it can telegraph your location. So these are best used a fair distance away from the strong point to attract as little attention as possible. Finally, you can have one of your squad mates redeploy at HQ and drive the supply truck, which contains 300 supplies, to your location. If there's no supply truck available at HQ, you can ask your commander to spawn one if he has the resources to do so. But using the supply truck is the most time consuming option, and since trucks tend to be AT magnets, they might not even make it to the front line, let alone behind enemy territory. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. God damn, man. Medal of Honor. Bravo. You might think that building a garrison inside the strong point is a good idea, uh, because as soon as you spawn on it, you'll be helping capture the point. And that's actually true. But you know what else is true? The fact that the enemy is going to drop artillery and bombing runs directly on the strong point, which will wipe out your garrison faster than a blueberry hits the killed in action screen in their first game. So instead, I recommend placing your garrisons inside the 2x2 two two square sector that contains the strong point, but outside of the strong point itself. They'll be far less likely to be taken out that way, and your team will still count towards capturing the point as soon as they spawn in. More specifically, I recommend surrounding the areas around the strong point with garrisons like you see here. See, when an enemy comes near your garrison, it actually lights up red on your map. You can take advantage of this by thinking of them sort of as an enemy radar detection system. If your garrison north of the strong point lights up red, then you know the enemy's making a push from the north. If one of your garrisons does light up, drop what you're doing and take action to eliminate the threat. If it does get destroyed, make it a top priority to replace it with a new one ASAP. You should also be aware that you can't place garrisons within 200 meters of each other, so make sure you account for that when requesting supplies. The manpower, fuel, and munitions nodes are essentially the currency that your commander needs to use abilities like spawning tanks, calling in bombing and strafing runs, establishing airheads, and other cool shit you're going to want them to do throughout the battle. So have someone go engineer at the start of the game and get those nodes built. It's best to build them inside the first friendly sector, because if you lose a sector, any nodes within that sector are wiped out. Building them in the first sector ensures that you still have 
have nodes even if you lose all the other sectors. A single engineer can build one full set of nodes per game, and your team can have a maximum of three sets of nodes per game. Each individual node costs 50 supplies to build, and there are a few different ways you can go about acquiring the 150 supplies needed to build a full set. As mentioned earlier, support players can only drop 50 supplies at a time, and then there's a five minute cooldown before they can drop supplies again. However, when a support player is in close proximity to a manpower node, the five minute cooldown is cut in half. So if you're using this method, have your engineer build the manpower node first to allow your support players to drop the supply crates a bit faster. Now if you use the supply truck, it's important to know that the supply truck can't actually drop its supplies in the first sector. But there is a workaround. Have your engineer hop into the supply truck with you and drive it to where the first sector meets the second sector. As soon as you cross into the second sector, drop one of the two supply crates which contains 150 supplies. You just need to be within 50 meters of the supplies to build the nodes, so your engineer can actually cross back into the first sector to build the nodes since they're still within 50 meters of the supply crate. Lastly, you can ask your commander for a supply drop, but remember it's only worth 100 supplies, so you're still going to need your support player to drop their supply crate to give you enough supplies to build a full set of nodes. Outposts are like garrisons, just on a smaller scale. They give your squad a place to spawn, and the best part is, they're free. You don't need supplies to place them, and you can place them anywhere in friendly or neutral territory, as well as up to two grid squares deep in enemy territory. While you can only redeploy on a garrison every 40 seconds, you can redeploy on an outpost every 20 seconds. As a squad leader, you should have an outpost placed for your squad at all times. Outposts are placed the same way garrisons are, by using your watch. However, unlike garrisons, you can only have a single outpost at any given time. The most important tool you have as a squad leader is your map. It's absolutely vital to understanding how the battle is unfolding and what you and your squad need to be doing. The map shows you vital bits of information that help inform your leadership decisions. Not only does it give you an idea of where your fellow squads are and what they're doing, but it also shows you markers for things like enemy infantry, light vehicles and tanks, as well as possible enemy outpost and garrison locations. If you're not checking your map, you won't be aware of these possible threats, and you could end up leading your squad right into a tiger tank waiting on the road, or run right past an enemy garrison that you could have destroyed. You won't notice things like friendly garrisons being lit up red because enemies are nearby, or the fact that your outpost just got destroyed by the enemy, all because you weren't checking your map. So guys, check your map and check it frequently. As a squad leader, it's your responsibility to share information with your squad and with the rest of your team. The best way to do this is by using map markers. Map markers are broken down into three categories. Order markers for your squad, like move, attack, and defend. Enemy markers, which are used to mark things like enemy infantry, tanks, outposts, and garrisons. And request markers for requesting things from your commander, like supply drops, bombing runs, and smoke. You can place these markers by right-clicking on the map and selecting a marker from the list. You can also place markers by looking through your binoculars at the desired target and holding the middle mouse button to bring up a radial wheel that allows you to select a marker. For console players, you can bring up this wheel by holding left on the D-pad. If your fellow squad leaders or commander have already marked something on the map, you don't need to mark it yourself, as that would just be redundant information and cause unnecessary map clutter. Also, be aware that certain markers are only visible to certain roles. Here's a helpful graphic that shows who can see each marker. You can find this graphic down in the video description as well. In addition to the usual squad and local voice channels, squad leaders have access to the command voice channel as well. This means you might have multiple conversations going on at the same time, which can be pretty overwhelming. If you're not, if you're there, break, get break, 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 break. Enemy tiger spotted able mark. Try not to contribute to the noise by sharing unneeded information or joking around in command chat. Share only what's important and keep it short and to the point. Commander, I got a supply drop request on the map. Roger, dropping supplies. Trust me, your fellow squad leaders will thank you. Encourage your squad to call out enemies when they see them. Another one here. Yep, let's keep pushing and to use the ping system to mark targets by clicking the middle mouse button or tapping left on the d-pad for consoles. Keep your squad informed of your current objectives. If you want them to fall back and defend the point, place a defend marker on the map and ask them to defend. If you want to lead them on a flank, place a move marker on the map and explain the plan to them. You also need to communicate with your commander and other squad leaders. If you get eyes on a high value target like an enemy garrison, relay that information on command chat and mark it on your map. If your squad is going to try to take out that garrison, let the commander and other squad leaders know that your squad's moving in. The commander is there to support the squad leaders, so don't be afraid to request a bombing run, smoke, supplies, or anything else. Uh, come in, can I get a tiger tank bottom spawn? 
If you have some anxiety about using a microphone, you might consider actually playing Spotter. They have the same abilities and tools as a regular squad leader, but only need to worry about managing one squad mate instead of five. If you do decide to go that route, be sure to check out my How to Play Recon the Right Way video, because there are some key differences in playing Spotter versus Squad Leader that you're going to want to understand first. You can find a link to that awesome video in the description. Everyone wants to be on the offensive in Hell Let Loose. Even in Warfare mode, as soon as your team captures the point, the majority of the team will want to run straight to the next point, completely neglecting to defend the point that was just captured. This typically leads to the point being back capped by the enemy, and that really sucks ass. But not you. You're going to be different. You're going to be the one squad leader to have their shit together and hang back and defend. You might think defending is boring, but trust me guys, it's not. It can be just as fun, if not more fun, than attacking. The key to defending is to not just sit inside the strong point while the enemy closes in on you. You need to be proactive about defending the entire cap zone, which is the four grid squares around the strong point. And it's not just about killing any enemies that come near the strong point. You should be sweeping the cap zone with your squad, looking for enemy outposts and garrisons. If you don't destroy their spawns, guys, they're going to keep coming and they'll eventually overwhelm you. So take out those spawn points. If you can incorporate just a couple of these tips, I promise you'll be way more effective than 90% of the squad leaders in public matches. There's a lot going on when you play squad leader and you aren't going to nail it on your first attempt. So just keep playing and I promise you'll eventually find your own leadership style. And hey, if you find out that squad leading just isn't right for you, maybe you're better suited for spraying hate at the enemy with an MG42. Alright guys, our primary short term objective is to make sure this garrison is off. Enemy garrison destroyed, enemy OP destroyed, and their nodes are right here guys. Good shit, good shit. Nodes. If that's the case, check out my ultimate machine gunner guide for some great tips on how to maximize that role. I'll catch you in that one guys.